Next question is from Jungle Jerry. Does getting a pump do anything for hypertrophy or just make you feel bigger for a short period of time? Yeah, yeah there's, there's two things to consider with the pump. One is think of the conditions that need to be present for you to get a really good pump, right? You're well hydrated. You're probably well fed, right? If you're in a really bad calorie deficit, your pumps tend to be gone, right? So you're well fed, well hydrated. You're not overtrained and you can connect to a muscle. It's hard to get a pump on a muscle that you have a terrible connection to. So when you get a good pump, it's also a good sign that, wow, I've got all those things. And that's that means that uh, at least some of the context is in the right place for muscle growth to happen. Now, does the pump also add to muscle growth with 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 that other, other stuff being said? Yeah, studies actually show that it's got some hypertrophy benefits through cell uh, swelling, which tends to signal muscle growth. Bodybuilders have known this forever. They've now, known isn't this for that ba basically what's happening there is that your body is learning or adapting uh, to being able to fill, with, uh, fill the muscle with more fluid than it would before, right? That's really the process of the sarcoplasmic hypertrophy. Well, sarcoplasm, sarcoplasm are all, is all of the non-muscle fiber yeah. structures and fluid within muscle, and training the pump theoretically improves or increases that because- you improve capillary density. I think of it like this. Like imagine like a water balloon and you always fill it up to exactly one cup, one cup, one cup, and it kind of expands and then you pour mm -hmm. it out. You spend. Whereas if now you force in two cups in there and it volumizes, the next time that you put that water in, it's it gets to that two cups a lot easier because you've taught it to stretch out. Yeah, there could point. be. There's a little bit of muscle fascia stretching that will yeah. happen with that also. Um, and also just you build more capillaries so you get more blood flow in the muscle. Um, there's also it signals. Uh, there's some studies that show that actually I mean, signals more muscle growth. Don't don't the cells actually volumize yes. too? Yeah. So yeah. the cells actually grow and get bigger. Which if they get bigger, they technically can hold yeah. more fluid, right? So yeah. that's kind of what's happening is you you've trained it to expand more than you ever mm -hmm. have before. And if you can expand the cells more, they can hold more more. Well, it's not just that. You're also increasing the amount of fluid that can go in there because more capillaries start to develop. You start to get more blood flow, more oxygen, more fluid through just your body. Body, uh, improving its ability to do it also. Yeah. And then you get the stretching effect and the cell swelling effect. That also signals more muscle growth also. They show it in increases uh, muscle protein synthesis. So it is now. If if you if you live and die by the pump, you'll make a mistake. Because that, that, that yeah. that's where, now I was going to add to that. Like so, I was a chase the pump guy only forever. And one of the things that I drove me crazy is, man, I could get to a place where I could really air up and look amazing in the gym. But two hours later, I feel like I would deflate almost like that water balloon got completely emptied. And there, I didn't feel like there was uh, the permanent effects that you might get from hypertrophy training didn't seem to be as sustainable or visual when I wasn't pumped as when I was strength training. We've talked about this before. Oh, with heavyweight, yeah. Yeah, like that was one of the big differences when I started training like five by fives and like really heavy, really pushing the weight was I didn't quite get as much of a pump, but the muscle I did add or build seemed to still be there even when I wasn't pumped up. Yeah. But when I was always chasing the pump and hypertrophy, I looked amazing in the gym, but then when I would air out, it, I would deflate back down to what I thought was like the normal size of me, and it didn't feel like as much of the gains stayed, if yeah. that makes sense. You know, early strength athletes didn't even, the, the pump was almost a nuisance. Because I was just gonna say, I mean, that's always been my experience. Yeah, yeah, especially with the forearm. You know, in terms of grip uh, and getting a crazy forearm pump, it was mm -hmm. like a very detrimental effect that would happen uh, in terms of like if I would needed to kill your grip, huh? Yeah, to to do anything. Uh, it was it was one of those things that I always considered a bad thing. And then <laughs> you know, getting into the bodybuilding uh, side of training. Uh, started to figure out, oh, wow, that's actually, you know, what they're seeking out because it does give you that effect that, man, it, it fills up your shirts, you look, your muscles look like they almost doubled in size. Yep. Um, but uh, I didn't really see the value of it until the combination of the two uh, consistently with the hypertrophy and then the strength training together is like you you get that size focus, but also now the strength kind of helps to, to sustain. Yeah, when I was a tra when I trained clients, it was a great way for me to to teach clients how to connect to muscles. Yeah, and it was also a great sign that they were building a muscle they had poor connection to. Like, if I had a female client whose butt was really it was really hard for her to build her butt, and she couldn't feel it when she squatted, when she squatted or whatever, and, and we would do priming and we do all the muscles, you know, all the exercises for the glutes, and I would make her technique good. And after a couple months, all of a sudden she'd say. Oh, I feel a pump in my butt. And then I knew 
it's going to build. We're connecting to it, uh, and it's it's working well. But you know, I'll tell you, I had like along the lines of what you said, Justin. I had a client once who hired me. He was a motocross racer, hmm. and he hired me because his forearms would get pumped while racing, and mm-hmm. he would lose his grip. Yeah. And he literally said, "I need to train, and I need a way to reduce the pump in my forearms." And I remember being so yeah. like, uh, "I don't know what to do." Because usually I'm trying to get that. I mean, I imagine you you what just trained his work capacity, right? You're probably just yeah. having him hold, hold. So that was my. So I actually my experience was, and this is kind of hilarious, but it was playing guitar. So I would get on stage and I would like get so tense, and I don't know if like you know the adrenaline and whatnot kind of added to that, but like I would start playing and my forearm would just get so yeah. tight and pumped, and like I could couldn't even keep playing. To a certain oh, point, wild. it's uh, and I'd get so frustrated because it was like limited, you know, to the to the length of like how I could uh, keep a really good continuous like uh, rhythm. Uh, so I started doing a lot more farmer carries, and I started doing all that yep. kind of stuff to elongate, uh, you know, that uh, that ability. Yeah, lots of endurance work. Yeah, that's exactly what I did. Lots yeah. of endurance work, and then he got better with you know managing. I got in jujitsu when I first started training. I'd grip the gi and just get so pumped that I'd lose my grip but then eventually your body you know gets better and adapts but it's a great way to sign and signal what's going on there are specific phases of maps programs where you're training for this like phase three of maps anabolic or maps aesthetic is focused on the pump but phase one of both is strength and you might get a pump you might not but we don't care it's about getting stronger yeah and building muscles through that if you combine the two and train in phases then you can really reap the benefits but if you get stuck in one and you never utilize the other side uh, then you're you're definitely slowing down. That's the key takeaway from this, I think, because that, that's what people get trapped in one or the other. Mm-hmm. You know, I was trapped in the and the hypertrophy one is really easy, especially for you know the person who's going to the gym to be more muscular, because when you're aired up, you look way different. And you want that, uh, yeah, yeah, and you want that. So you and you and it's like it's a I good can feeling. See, yeah, it is. It's a great feeling. You can see it immediately right away. So. You know, you end up chasing that all the time, thinking that that's you know going to help get you bigger. And then, will, you know, if you've been doing that for six months consistently all the time, your body's so adapted that you're getting very little benefit to actually building any muscle. And the best thing that person could do if they want to look bigger or be bigger is to switch out of the the pump training and go into strength training. Yep. You like the information in this clip? You guys are gonna love the information in this full episode. Make sure you subscribe and check it out.